Last time on Tim's Garage, you saw that I destroyed my engine and taken it to the machine builders to get machined and to order the parts so they can now rebuild the engine. In this episode, you get to see us rebuild the engine on the MPS. I've said it before and I will say it again, I am not a mechanic. Most of the time I have very little idea of what I'm doing, um, but I'm willing to have a go. And so when it came to putting this engine together, got to throw out a few thank yous to um, Ray from Raytune. We've got to thank Luke Wilkes, we've got to thank Nate from New Age Auto Parts, uh, my brother Matthew, my dad John, uh, there's so many people to thank. So um, sit back and watch this process. This is not a DIY because I don't want to be responsible for anybody else blowing up their engine because they followed my lead. Um, this is the first time I've ever done this, but the car works really, really well. And so a huge thanks um, to all you guys that helped out and Ray who helped me put the engine, the, the core parts, the pistons and those bits together. Um, a huge thanks, man. I really learned a lot and really appreciate your help. Just getting in here to do up the bolts um, on this awesome intake. But this kit comes with absolutely everything. It's pretty, pretty comprehensive.
think it would be safe to say that this is a two-man job. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is coming together. some of the, the nitty gritty, the engines in the car. It feels like a very long time since this car had an engine in it. So I'm very happy about that. We, um, we've got some hose and we're gonna start wiring up or hooking up our um, PCV valve. We've got a perm plate in this one. Um, there's different options, but basically it just vents some air from your, your, your block. So as the pressure builds up in there, you've got to get rid of that gas. And so we're going to hook something up there. Uh, this has got a double vent, so there's two. So we're going to go two to one. Um, could run separate outs, but we're just trying different stuff. We've got a special hose for that. We're going to run that into a catch can, which I think I'm going to mount over this side of the car. Um, that's the plan at the moment anyway. And yeah, so that's where we're at. Then we get to start hooking everything up, uh, which will be a lot of fun. I can't even begin to say how thankful I am that I labeled everything at this point of the build. It, it kind of seems, it slows things down a little bit at the start, but um, it, it took so long to build this that I don't know what bolts go where. Uh, and so just by having them in a bag, tail shaft, better put the tail shaft back on to the, um, the gearbox, to the transfer case, dump pipes on. I haven't hooked up my external wastegate yet, but that'll be next. Um, but it's, yeah. Everything's going together. Uh, actually, before the external wastegate, I'm going to start plumbing some of the wires. I know some of those are going to get a bit tight with the external wastegate there, but ha, ah, it's going back together. It's a lot of fun. take to the welders to get that cut you know the the mod if you've seen my intercooler install video see the mod we do with that we'll get that done then intake on um, battery in and then we just got a couple more fluids I need to check the plug on this um, it snapped off but we're ridiculously close to getting this together
So I've bought the very last part that I need to finish this car. And it's a bit of plastic and it's the, um, the radiator plug. When I was getting a bit enthusiastic doing some bits and pieces up, I um, snapped that one off. So we're going to replace it with a plastic plug and then we're, um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> The moment of truth, five months in the making. So for the first time in five months, this is about to sit on its front wheels again. Bonnet, about to go on, and um, going to upload the new tune, and the car goes. <laughs> yes! The first drive was okay, but something wasn't right. The engine seemed fine, but it felt like my clutch was slipping. I couldn't believe that I may have to take out my gearbox again. But then we found the source of the problem. I am tired. Look at the bags under those eyes, baby. Woo! Um, yeah, I am very tired. It is... I have no idea. Um, it's 
midweek, nothing that really matters on the video, but it's, I'm doing a dash to a, um, a wreckers right now, um, to pick up a, a CV joint, a drive shaft. Yeah, I've just pulled the band off and, and pulled it off and had a look, and basically it's just pulled it out. It's not as messed up as what I thought. Um, I'll clean that up and show you a video a bit later, maybe of, of how to rebuild a, a CV joint, if I haven't already got it in the video somewhere. Um, this end's fine. This end's just, it's just popped out. There's a clip that sort of fits into the whole spine and the way it kind of looks like that. Um, that sort of gear sort of end on this end that goes into the the part that moves um, with the ball bearings and all that sort of gear in there. It's all got technical terms that I don't know. All I know is I've built a heap of them now and it's just what you've got to end up doing. It. But um, yeah, that is actually reusable. The actual drive shaft itself will cut the clips, put in, get a new boot for it and then we've got a spare. But um, that's what was stopping the car from going. So we'll We'll fix that and then we'll keep going. <laughs> Sitting on the freeway, just driving because I can in the MPS. Um, that's cool. Sitting in the car that I built, with the engine that I put together with my own hands on a freeway. Um, Wow, just wow. It's oh it, it, there's something of this is just crazy. There's something amazing about this. It, it's it's just that there's like a level of nervousness and anxiety all the time. So every time just if I've got my windows down because I haven't got the aircon regassed yet, um, I'll drive past some cars and I'll hear a rattle or something and so Immediately, I think, what could that be? What have I done to my car? What's rattling? What's not working the way it's supposed to? And then I realised that the next set of cars, that, that, that rattle isn't existent. It actually wasn't my car. This car is running ridiculously smooth. It's just full on. It, it's. I don't, I couldn't be happier. To be honest, it's the car is running fantastically. Um. Kind of the mark where um, after this drive, just getting it out and doing a big, long, um, semi-long, just a bit of a cruise up and down the freeway, just totally for the reason of getting K's in the engine. Once I've got some K's in the engine, then um, I'm going to get it home, I'm going to dump the oil, uh, check the oil, see if there's anything in it, see if there's any metal bits or chunks of stuff floating around in there. Way the car's sounding and driving and performing, I doubt that's going to be the case. Yeah, so I've just done about 200 k's in this. Um, car's nice and warm, so now I'm just going to dump the oil, the running in oil, because we've done a couple hundred k's. We're going to check that to see if there's anything in the oil, make sure that engine's wearing in really nicely. Then I'm going to top it up again. Then I'm going to do a larger stint, about 800 k's. I'm going to dump that running in oil, and then. We're ready for the full synthetic proper stuff, the really good gear that we're going to put in, but we're going to keep using the running in oil. Just going to give this a general check now while I'm underneath here. Check all my um, lower control arms, all the stuff that I undid, CV joints, all that sort of stuff, um, especially because I had to replace one. And just make sure everything's right while I'm underneath it. Then, um, yeah, but first let's give it a some more. hoping for some fantastic weather to get those amazing shots of the car while it was super clean but um 
it hasn't stopped raining for days in Sydney, Australia. And so I thought maybe we'll do a bit of a flashback over the build. I really want to get this video out for you this week. I know a lot of people have been keen to see it. And so just thinking back to about five or six months ago now when the car finally broke, um, that feeling of, you know, what am I going to do? Am I even going to get the car home and how terrible that felt? Um, jumping straight into it basically to pull the engine out just to see what was wrong. From that point we, we ended up ordering all the parts once we got that engine out and realised that the rods were bent and it was a full rebuild. Um, we got on to Nate at New Age Auto Parts and he really hooked us up with um, everything we needed to get that build done. Huge thank to Nate, huge thank to Ray, huge thanks again to Luke. Uh, also got to thank uh, HDI for supplying the intercooler for this build. Um, so we got to putting the car together and at the end of the day it actually worked so well. I, I wouldn't recommend this for anybody just to have a go. This is quite a huge job. It took months, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of hard work. You can see I've even got the HDI gauges in this shot. And um, yeah, and the car's not finished. I've still got coilovers to put in, diff mounts, sway bars, the, the list keeps going. So this is not the end of the car. You will see it again. Um, this year the plan was to buy rims for it and so we still haven't done that but that's to come so thanks for watching guys appreciate the support please subscribe uh, we're on, you'll find us on Facebook you'll find us on YouTube and um, we'll see you on the next episode on Tim's Garage thanks guys